Hello everyone, today I'm gonna teach you how to make a joystick like the one you see here. This will be my first video in which I use my real voice, so if you have any concerns or problems, you can comment down in the comment section below. Let's start off by creating a node and adding two sprites as its shell, one for the tip and one for the base. The base is like the background of the joystick while the tip is the one which we will use to move around. We will then add the textures to the base and a tip. I will add the download link for these textures at the description. After that, we will add a script to the joystick to make our joystick moving. We'll just set up some export variables here like the tip clamp zone size which will determine how far or the maximum distance of the tip will be from the base. It's generally the size of the base which in my case 356 pixels. The joystick is kind of too big for me so I will set the scale to something smaller. Next, we will add another export variable which is the dead zone size. The dead zone size will determine how far the tip will be until it gives something to output. After that, I change the tip clamp zone size value to be the size of the base divided by the scale of the joystick. I also set the dead zone size to be close to the quarter of the tip clamp zone size variable. I added the is pressed variable to check if the joystick is currently pressed and a touch index variable to handle the multi-touch. Finally, we need to reference the base and the tip in our script. Let's now add the input function to handle all the inputs like touching. Before that, let's go to our project settings and search for emulate touch from mouse. I already got it enabled, but if you don't have it enabled in yours, enable it. Now let's check if we are currently touching the screen. If we are touching the screen, we will check if the touch position is in the tip of the joystick. We can do this by getting the rect of the tip by using get rect and then check if it has a point which is the touch position. If the touch position is inside the rect, we will set our touch index variable to the event that index. Also, we will set the is pressed variable to true. If we are not pressing, we will set our touch index to negative 1 and the is pressed variable to false. Now let's check if we're currently dragging the screen. If we are, let's check if the is pressed variable is equal to true and if the event index of the dragging is equal to the touch index. We will then call the move joystick variable which will make our tip move. In the move joystick function, we will calculate the position of the tip on where it needs to go. We will do this by subtracting the get global mouse position to the position of the joystick, which is vector 2.0. We will then limit it so it won't go outside the base of the joystick. We can do this by using limit length and the size we want to clamp it to, which is the tip clamp zone size variable we set earlier. Now, we will set the position of the tip to be the position that we calculated earlier. Now, let's check if it works. This will not work because we forgot to make the touch position local in the rec that has point part of our code, which is here. Now, let's try again if it works. 
Nice. Now it works. I will adjust the tip plumzone size variable because it's kind of off to me. I will do this by dividing it to the scale of the tip, which is 1.25. Nice. Now it's looking more perfect. One more thing I forgot to add was to reset the position of the tip, which is by setting it to vector 2.0. I decided to use a twin to make it go back to its original position smoother. This is completely optional so if you don't want to do it, it's fine. Now let's see if it works. Now as you see, it goes back to its original position smoother. I will adjust that time it gets back to its original position to be a bit smaller because it kind of takes too long. For the final part, let's create a signal that will emit if we are currently pressing the joystick. It will return a vector 2 which is the position from the base to the tip of the joystick. I emit the signal here in the move joystick function, but later I will move it to the process function since we need it to emit every frame if we are touching the joystick. The vector 2 that we will put in the parameter of the signal is the position of the tip from the base. We calculate this by subtracting the position of the tip from the base. From here, I will create a simple scene that will demonstrate how the joystick works. I added the node that we will move around, which is the Godot icon, and I also added the joystick scene that we made earlier. Then I connected the signal that we made from the joystick to the script of the Godot icon. I also normalized the position in the joystick press signal in the joystick. In the Godot icon script, I added its position to the position of the joystick multiplied by the speed. Let's see if it works. Currently, it moves too fast because the speed is too high. Let's set it a smaller value like 2.5. Now, let's try again. As you can see, it works perfectly. But if we stop moving our joystick but we're still pressing it, the node stops moving. This is the part where we move our emit signal method to the process function. We will do this by adding a process function checking if our tip position is not equal to vector 2.0 and then if the, the distance of the base to the tip is higher than the dead zone size. If it is, we emit the signal. Finally, let's run it and see if it works. You can see, it only emits a signal if the distance of the tip from the base is higher than the dead zone size. Thank you for watching. That's all for today's video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you have any suggestions and requests for a tutorial, comment down in the comment section down below. That's all for today's video. Goodbye.